Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first head-to-head -head episode of Salvage Stories. Today we're parting out not one, but two cars to see which is more profitable. Introducing first, hailing from South Atlanta with a purchase price of $15,453 and 42,000 miles. Down but not out, still driving under its own power, the 2018 land vessel known as the USS Scat Pack. Now, coming into this contest in absolutely horrific shape with 20,000 miles and a parts-only title. Also from Atlanta, Georgia, the Challenger, pun intended, with a purchase price of $9,683, the 2021 Dodge Charger RT Scat Pack. <laughs> this time guys let's get to it do you want to do the honors of driving or do you want to ride shotgun why wow, you're gonna let me drive this because it's disgusting right i mean we both have to sit in it either way yeah this car is disgusting and remember this is the more expensive one of the two the one that's supposed to be nice or at least i bought thinking it was going to be nice and well it ain't i mean it's absolutely filthy it looked really good in the pictures but i mean jesus look at that boy left all his gum wrappers very thankful for that he did leave us a little change which is nice hopefully it runs better than it looks so it's dirty filthy disgusting but it sounds healthy so i mean i'll take it we're one for two 50 percent it's not a passing grade but it's gonna work. It's gonna have to work. Oh, I look on it. You, you look great. One? You look great. You buy one? Yeah, I don't know about that. Eh. We're gonna have to keep it in the parking lot because, well, we don't have seatbelts. I can't understand why the people who buy these cars because feel like really big. This is something that you could definitely drive every day and feel comfortable in as long as it's not making those sounds, right? <laughs> Oh, you got, you, got, you got a little pop, 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 burble tune, baby. I guess we're not going to learn much more than that, right? So I guess we can uh, go drag the other one over here now, which we're not going to be able to drive for obvious reasons. It's it's bad, but how bad is it as far as the interior? I mean, it's <coughs> it's fixable and you can actually make it look way nicer. But... Yeah, I mean, they're not ripped or anything. Yeah, exactly. So it's, yeah, they're that's just the main thing. filthy. It's just dirty. It is the whole running joke here that I don't wash my cars because, well, I don't. But I don't do this to them, so I mean, just keep it kind of clean, guys. At least the inside, the part you're looking at, keep it clean. So obviously this one wasn't driving, but it's still supposed to start. So uh, I guess go ahead and crank this thing up and let's see if it sounds as good as the first one. You might need the interior is actually really clean. It's got to be, right? It's 2021. I mean, it's base. So this is as base as base gets for these cars. We have a couple blown bags. That center console, um, slightly out of line. Oh, no problem. nice and quiet i mean can't ask for much more so for as bad as these two cars are this one being filthy and this one being wrecked to shit, uh the engines both sound really healthy obviously we have to leak them down if it doesn't leak down well then we're kind of screwed on both these cars everybody is here ready to put our guesses in on this again if you didn't get it in the intro or you need a reminder this piece of junk over here nine thousand six hundred eighty three dollars this less of a piece of junk over here fifteen thousand four hundred and fifty three Obviously, the main concern when you're doing something like this is this not getting pushed back into the oil pan, which it did not. Another point that maybe we'll factor in, they have very, oh. very poor taste in football teams. So I think the only thing underneath of this thing worth mentioning is that the passenger side of exhaust is The driver's side of exhaust. Here we are. So this differential does have a little bit of damage as well. well I'll put in my official guess. We're going to make more on the maroon car. It's got the, the six piston calipers. It's got the better interior. It's got a full front end. It just has well enough parts to make up the price difference. There's a little more than meets the eye. Like we have that intake system, which is still a really nice piece. And if I haven't mentioned it yet, guys, 
this whole like shaker if you want to call it that uh intake system is like a thousand bucks plus we do have it on both cars but obviously a thousand bucks is a bigger percentage of a ninety six hundred dollar car than it is of a fifteen thousand dollar car go for it red red obviously. we're going dude i guess i picture it's gonna be less Parts of picture, less time consuming. That's, that is a More very storage. good point. If you guys aren't new to this series, you know at the end we take in labor, selling costs. There's a lot more that goes into this than just what you see from a parts standpoint. We got Eric Fernando going gray. What'd you say, Jeremy? I'm going gray too. Jeremy's going gray as I well. Know how much red. All right, so raise your hand if you're red. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, we're actually like split. <laughs> we're split. So I'm going red. I don't even think it's close. So. I'm, I'm, I'm team red as well. I didn't think it was going to be that divided. I thought everyone would see how nice that red car was and just say red and it would kind of be a sweep and it would be boring, but it's not turning out to be that way. If I pull this off, you can't talk any crap to me ever again without forklift driving. Look, if you get this in the way you're about to try to get it in, I won't tell anybody ever again that you ran this forklift into the grass right there and had to be pulled out. I won't tell anybody. He looks concerned. He looks super concerned. Here's Eddie. Yeah, the shaker's not shaking. Do you think it's broken? Possibly. Yeah. It wasn't an accident. This thing is this thing is rough. This was not a light hit. You can really see it now that you have the seat out of here. This thing is just. Whew. We've definitely had worse in here, but I certainly would not want it to have been in this car when it got wrecked. Are those your shades? No. Oh, we got a free pair of glasses with this car. These got to be worth at least three bucks, right? Things are really racking up in the gray car's favor, but word on the street is uh, we found something in the red car as well that might be worth a little more than this. Fernando. Yeah. What do you want to pay for these? Ooh, they're all clay or something. I can't wear this. No? No, I can't. They don't fit. They're gonna fit on you. Oh my God, this is, that's perfect for you. I don't know, I'm not. Come on, flip it. Look at you. This is what we got on the red car, right? Yeah. These are like Gucci or something, right? Yeah. They, they gotta be. Fernando, all right, I got something else for you. <laughs> I don't think I'm fitting in those. Who's got the smallest feet here? Hey. Eric! <laughs> There he is. I'm screaming thinking he's back there. He's right there. I have club feet. I have very wide feet. Oh! oh. <laughs> I thought you broke your ankle. I'm not gonna lie. It looks good on you. I'm getting out of here before we get copyrighted, guys. Interior is pretty bare. I mean, it looks uh looks pretty well stripped in there. Obviously, we do a few less of these than we do Camaros and that type of stuff, Mustangs. So when we get these, we tend to take a lot more. And honestly, the interior parts on these cars tend to be worth a little bit more money. I don't know why, because it still fits the same model as the Mustang, the Camaro, where there's base model stuff. Not a lot of it's different, but I think the Dodge stuff, maybe because some of it's a little newer, just pulls a little more money. These things are so big and dumb. Sorry, Mopar guys, it's just the truth. I know I sound like I'm being kind of harsh there, but like, come on, it's so much bigger than the LS for what? To make less power? This bracket, which if you guys are wondering why this is here, that is for that weird intake that this thing had on it, the shaker, and uh, that will be coming off and getting sold with the intake set up. So are they paying the ship or something? We only have a box for it. I gotta freaking cut open a box and 
sliding all over. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, that That's is... ridiculously big. That is pretty ridiculously big. So each car kind of has its own weird little quirks like that. The shipping department apparently hates the drive shafts on these cars because we don't have a box for them. We can ship every drive shaft we have in the same box because they're all relatively the same length. However, when you buy a boat like this, apparently that doesn't work. <laughs> Now, for as big and bulky as the engine trans setup is on this, the rear end pretty much looks like every other IRS sports car we get here. Tyler's going to go ahead and get cracking on that rear subframe there. We'll go ahead and get the engine off the front subframe, get the radiator off it, all that good stuff. Then, uh, as you guys know, the riskiest part of any part out, the leak down. This is obviously one of the downsides of working with a heavily wrecked car. Tyler's came out nice and smooth. This one, not so much. There you go. So as far as I know, she's undamaged. Obviously, it's a little dirty though. The belt got knocked off it at some point and there's just dried, crusty mud on there. Uh, so we will have to spray this thing off. But first, we're gonna go ahead and leak them down because as I already said like five times in this video, that's what matters. We're gonna do them side by side, I think. Hopefully, we have two good engines. Check her out there. How'd she, how'd she do? Oh, she's solid. Real good. Team Red's looking good. I guess today's like D-Day. I didn't even know it was really. It wasn't I supposed wasn't, to be. Uh, yeah, I wasn't thinking about the comparison between the two. And I think it's clean. If I didn't already show you guys what this car looked like before he sprayed it off, well, here you go. I mean, some of it is like you can, you can't get to certain areas. Yeah. But like, that's just a lot. Like I was literally sitting here with the power washer. So, I suppose we can live with it as long as it leaks down well, right? Man, the worst part is I can't even blame that on you because I actually found that car. That's, that's I true. I remember sending it to you like, hey, this looks okay. Even though we are team red in this contest, if you want to call it that, and so this comes down to the wire and is actually fun to watch, we obviously hope very much that this is good, right? Like, we're not we're not actively rooting against it, right? No, I want, I want to wear, I want to win fair and square here. This is We are a quarter of the way there on this one. Let's uh, speed this up a little bit. All right, last one of the whole day. Solid. So there we have it, a couple of good engines. The absolute heater world on Salvage Stories continues. We've yet to have a bad engine and hopefully we keep it that way for a long, long time. However, if there's gonna be an engine that turns out to be bad, I'd rather have it not be one of those. When we tear down a Coyote, when we tear down an LS, we can generally get roughly the same amount of money. Now it does take a lot more labor, it's a lot more to sell, a lot more to ship, it's kind of a pain, but the value is still there. When we first got into this market, I spoke with Tim at Cleveland Power and Performance. Who, I got the rundown on Mopar stuff from him before we ever bought one. One thing he said is if you get a bad engine, you're kind of screwed. Unlike the LS and the Coyotes and these, you're not recouping your money. You either have to one, rebuild it, which we hate to do that. So we have to send it out to a machine shop. We have to wait. We have to spend a ton of money. It just doesn't work well with our timeline. We like to move volume here. We like to move fast. The other option, and this is the option we go with on most of the LSs and Coyotes, are simply to part them out. However, in these, you're getting 50% of that value max. I was just talking with Tyler about that, that nobody builds those motors. Uh -huh. You don't see like cammed Mopar motors or Coyote motors for that fact like you do LS's so the LS's are always good in pieces because people are always in there building them and tinkering with them yep. those type of swaps they just do intake exhaust and, and you know it, 85 exactly. or something and it's nothing internal is messed with usually and so they're so simple that the replacement market for it just isn't as good we're not going to pull all this out right now we'll leave that for Fernando tomorrow this is all kind of run of the mill stuff one thing I will say these scat pack Bilsteins are not as valuable as the Hellcat Bilsteins we'll go over that more when we break down the price of these parts primarily stuff from the red car and then over here we start to have some parts from the black car you see how much that produced versus how much the red car produced i mean not that you didn't know that was going to be the case but it really shows when you have it all laid out kill me with this bunch of parts and i'm telling you i stick with the other one thinking it's going to make more money than this one. i still think great the labor just, cost on this car yeah. is certainly going to be higher but, so actually i think you might be artificially inflating this I didn't even think about that angle, guys. He's definitely taking his sweet time on the red car, so I have to jack up the labor price just to give him and the gray car team a little bit of an advantage, which, I mean, it, it's smart. I don't like it. If you're not cheating, you're not trying, right? <laughs> 
I like that. I never heard it before. This has became quite the heated battle here. I mean, people are arguing all over the shop. This is a very hotly debated topic. Um, so I can't wait to see how this turns out. And uh, fortunately, it looks like we are going to get on our way to finding out this afternoon. Just how are we looking? In time. Just in time for what? So I'm about to done the second one. The well, red one is damn, completely done. Done, done. Yeah, done, done. I'm about to finish this one. It's a little bit more parts than I expect. I don't want to see any more parts parts for a little bit. I'll so. give you at least a week. No. Well, at least a week? At least hey, a week. What about a month? A month, no yeah. Mopars. Yeah. You, you know this is a Mopar video, right? Yeah. They're, they're going to be mad at you. What if there's people watching us? They need Hellcat parts. Stat. Oh, my God. Those are the tires from the gray car? Yeah. And these, these super base seats right here. Do they actually work something? I'm presuming like everything else with the Mustangs, the Camaros, somebody is going to take these and put them in some kind of resto mod. Listing this stuff is going to take a while. Not only are they big cars, well, at least the red one is, but it's two cars. I think I can probably knock it out in one long day, so hopefully I'll see you guys back in here very shortly, and then we can break this down and see who was right after all. All right, guys, we are done. It actually didn't take that long and combined. They really somehow did not produce that many parts. However, it ended up being very, very close. As per usual, we're gonna go ahead and hop into the old internet here. I'll show you guys how much it produced, what we got out of it parts value-wise, but regardless of how you feel after you see this first round of numbers, you're not gonna know how this ends until after we go over the expenses because this thing is that close. We're gonna run through this pretty quickly because we've already been over a lot of this information. You guys know what we pay for the cars, but I did want to show you guys what they looked like in the auction pictures. This one, I mean, it's, it's pretty rough. So, I mean, it was definitely very accurately represented. As for the red one, surprise, it looked nice in the pictures, and, well, it's nice. Okay, now, one thing that is kind of surprising, based on the way this interior looks here, I really did not know that this thing was as filthy as it was. Just judging by the condition of the car and what you can see here, it looks really nice. Anyway, now you guys know what we saw when we committed to buy these things. Let's get into what they produced parts-wise. First up, the red car. 77 total parts, which is very light. It's almost surprisingly light. If you would have asked me when we started this, how many parts we'd have from the red car, I would have easily said over 100. As for value, which is obviously the more important factor here, 34,423. It's a little over double what we have in the car, so it's not terrible. You guys have certainly seen videos in this series where the margins have been much thicker. For a car of this price range, we would like to have a little more as far as value. So while I don't think this car is going to be a home run by any means, I think there's still enough there that it's going to put up a good number against this gray car. Now, more of a surprise in my opinion was the value of the gray car. $23,000 from that piece of junk. It produced only 25 less parts. That's shocking to me. Again, I would have pegged this car right around 50 parts, which is accurate. But like I just said, I would have pegged the red car at about 100 parts. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the parts of note. Starting with the red car, one thing that pulls good money in these repeatedly, wire harnesses. Now, a lot of the wiring in that gray car was damaged, so that's right off the bat a good bit of value we get out of the red car. Continuing on, these bezels, I don't know exactly what people use them for. Presumably, it's converting to the bigger radio, the 8.4 inch that everybody wants. If you have a base car and you want to do the upgraded radio, you need one of these. They're $350. They're good money. They always sell pretty quickly as well. Steering wheels in these, while they pull 200 bucks, they don't sell super fast. Now, if we have a Hellcat, those wheels are about $650, $700, and they sell almost immediately. Next up, exhaust actuators. Now, I can't tell exactly what drives the market on these, whether it's people putting them in aftermarket exhaust or there's a damage aspect to it where they fail and people are replacing them. But every time we get a set of these, especially if we cut them with the pipes right there, people buy them real quick, 400 bucks all day. Obviously, big money in these, the drivetrain. The market has softened on these Dodge dropouts a little bit. So this one being the higher mileage one, 10 grand. Here we get into some good stuff. These bumpers, not cheap. The hoods, also not cheap. Now keep in mind, we list these hoods as local pickup only because to ship it properly to our standards, which means creating it so we know for a fact it's not going to get damaged, costs about $800 between supplies, freight, labor. It's, it's a mess. Very few people want to pay for that, so we go the local pickup route only on hoods. Front frame rails, the front apron cuts, these things sell really well in these cars. It's obviously a huge repair market for the new Mopar stuff. One thing that is huge money in these compared to some of the other cars we deal with, steering racks. We have other electric steering racks out of, say, you know, a fifth gen Camaro. The later ones had electric steering. Those things don't even pull $300. These guys, $900. If it was lower mileage, I'd probably mark it up to a grand and it would sell no problem. 
Also a big fixer market in these things that we've been over this before in some of the other Mopar videos, the knuckles, the control arms, these knee assemblies. When you guys smack one into the curb, you come to us and want this whole thing. It's cheaper to buy it from us used all assembled than it is to buy it from Dodge. So each one of those corners, 450 bucks. And I'm gonna take the time to open this up because this is a special piece. I knew the red seats were expensive and anytime you get a rare, desirable, bright color in any car, it jacks the price up. However, as far as a premium pulled over black, these might be right up there with S2000s. Black scat pack door panels are roughly $300, maybe $400, though the chargers are more expensive because they're four piece, but we can talk about that in a charger video, right? With the full red door panels from the Challenger here, we went with $1,000. And that is not me guessing it. A set sold for $1,000 yesterday. It wasn't from us, but there's no reason ours aren't gonna sell for the same price. Frankly, ours are in a little nicer shape than that set that sold after Fernando worked his magic on them. Finishing up on the red car here, obviously the red seats, even though they're kind of nasty, we noted them as having a smoke smell because that's what Austin had put in the check-in sheets. They cleaned up halfway decent. They're certainly not, you know, minty seats, and if they were, I'd probably list them closer to $2,500. Now, after I clicked through this page, this may have caught some of your eyes. This was a surprise to me as well. I knew these intakes were expensive. I didn't really know they were this expensive. <laughs> There's one of these intakes on eBay right now with the hood for three grand as i just explained we don't really like to ship the hood so we decided to separate it if you're trying to buy this kit which comes with everything you see here from dodge i believe they're 17 or 1800 dollars so somebody can simply come here and buy ours have a nice used complete kit save a couple hundred bucks and obviously for us it's a great package because typically these cars are not pulling that much more than the non-shaker cars let's go ahead and go over here to the gray car one interesting point of note on here obviously to anybody with even an untrained eye, the red car looked higher option than that gray car, correct? If you think otherwise, go ahead and put it in the comments. But one thing was distinctly different about them as far as options. For whatever reason, the red car had halogen headlights. And while they were both good, both in actually really nice shape, as a pair, they only pulled $500, which is wildly disappointing from a late model sports car. Now the gray car, which by all accounts was a significantly worse packaged car, I don't know if somebody specifically optioned it with that or in the later years they more commonly came with HIDs, but whatever the reason, these lights, if they're in good shape, will pull well over double what a halogen light will pull. Now, unfortunately, this one is not in good shape. It's not as bad as it could, but it's not completely blown apart, uh, but it does have some crack tabs, as you can see right there. The lens, while not terrible, does have scratches on it. So overall, just not a great headlight. Keeping on, this car, we sold the wheels individually. Last one, we had a full set of four. Obviously, we're gonna sell those together. These ones being new in a different design than some of the later years, still pull a little bit of money. One other thing that we may have mentioned already in the video, these center brake lights. These are great money. Now, unfortunately, these are designed as one big piece. So as you can imagine, they are not cheap from Dodge. On any of the Mopars we've done that has had a good center brake light, we've yet to keep one of these in stock for more than a week. I don't anticipate this one's gonna be any different, so I think that's gonna be $500 in our pocket very quick. Back to the door panels. This is a look at what you're gonna get out of a black set of door panels. Now, these are cloth. If you had an Alcantara one, if you had a leather one out of a Hellcat, they might pull a little more, but as far as base ones, this is as much as you're ever gonna get out of them. Now we do get a little bit of extra money out of the drivetrain here because it's 20,000 lower miles and though it was a worse looking car, the drivetrain is no worse for the wear. So we jacked the price up a grand, called that one $11,000. Last but not least here, a couple items that had some damage. You guys saw the differential damage in this. Fortunately, it's still totally functional. It's almost just aesthetic, though one could argue it does have, you know, a little bit of a cooling effect being that a half of a fin's broken off. Regardless, we knocked off 150 bucks. I'm sure somebody will buy this, save a couple bucks, and be very happy with it. And now, as far as late model Mopar, this is pretty much the worst set of seats you can possibly get. They are the cloth seats with the checkered pattern, and they are blown bags. So they are as base as base gets and damaged. Now, the good news is we're still charging $1,000 for them, and I think they'll sell at that. The rest of mod market is huge, and those guys simply don't care about airbags. A lot of those guys have recovered them regardless. So for them, this is really a cheap, bare-bones option into getting a nice set of seats for their, you know, 68 Charger. That's going to do it for our parts. Let's go ahead and go over our expenses. So I'm going to run down these numbers together. Then at the end, I'll give you the full head-to-head -head breakdown. First up, shipping, $500. They both came from Atlanta, both cost $500, so we have an even split there. Next up, labor. That's everything from dismantling it to shipping it to photoing it. 
everything. I originally thought this split was going to be much, much higher, but because of the fact that the red car did not produce that many parts, we called the red car 1000 and the gray car 750. Both of those cars came apart really easy. We didn't have to tear down a bad engine. We didn't have to do anything crazy with either of them. Selling fees as per usual, 10% across the board. $34.92 for the red one, $23.45 for the gray one. Moving right along, shipping. And this one is where we have a massive split. The red car, while it didn't produce that many more parts, the parts that it did produce were pretty damn massive. That's kind of the price you pay for having a good front end on the car. It's just what it is, but I mean, we're obviously not gonna complain about it, right? The great car, as far as items that are paying the ship, really just seats an engine. Other than that, that's gonna be a pretty light and easy car. With that stuff considered, we went $2,500 for the red car and only a thousand bucks for the gray car. So obviously in that one, massive advantage gray. Last up, dead inventory. Stuff that takes forever to sell, we have to discount heavily to sell or simply never sells. Now we don't have these cars quite as dialed in as say a fifth gen Camaro or a C6 Corvette, but anytime you see us keep under 100 parts, and in this case, far under 100 parts, there's simply not that much left to sit around. To really increase the number of parts a car produces, you have to start keeping stuff that simply doesn't sell as well. Obviously that wasn't the case here, so neither of these numbers are gonna be too wild. This is obviously the hardest one of the group to ballpark, but we went with $2,500 for red and 2,000 for gray. I'm gonna assume you guys didn't have your calculators out during that, but now that we've ran through all of our expenses, here is the final breakdown. That's right, chalk one up for the good guys. The red car takes home that W by $2,298. I suppose that's a wrap for this video. It might be a minute until I do another salvage story because we have so much going on with the ZR1, the Porsche, and the other Porsche. If you guys like this format of having two cars go against each other and kind of making it a little more interesting, let me know in the comments. And uh, if that's the case, I will make this a thing. We can even eventually do like uh, cross manufacturer comparisons. There's really no limit. We could do import versus domestic. If that's something you guys want to see, definitely let me know. Otherwise, make sure you share, like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff, and I will see you guys next time. <laughs> nah, that's stupid. Back up. <laughs> Did you ever see that movie with the Joker when he wore the red suit? Yes. I got married in that suit. Obviously, I weighed like 30 pounds less at the time. The date I ordered that okay. was before that, and then when I got married, that movie had came out like a week before. So then I'm just sitting there looking like the Joker, feeling like a joke. He's getting tired. He's starting to shake. I don't know if you can see it in the video. Yeah, he's, 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 he's having trouble. You got anything clever to say? Okay. I'm about to drop you, you on camera. Dalton, how'd this happen? Before, yeah, before I get roasted for this, come look at where that mark is. Like, I barely hit that, too, and it just hit right over. Look at that mark, right? That okay. one, like, right there. Right there. No, not that no, 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 I think no, that's what he hit. That wasn't me. That one. <laughs> Stay hydrated, boys. It's hot out here. Also, don't ride in dusty ass scat packs. How did. Do... Oh, that, this is. This is just not cool. I mean, I really should have looked this car over before that intro because, oh I mean, real missed opportunity. Like that brings us to today's video sponsor, Accurate Reels. <laughs> just, just, just kidding. I, I don't fish anymore. I just make YouTube videos. This is, this is a $2,500 YouTube prop at this what? point. That's enough. I'm done. Cut.